Hey, Indy. We're starting. We are starting. It is it is 7 p.m. Eastern, so here we go. Okay. Let's get straight to it. Howdy, howdy, yeah, ho. There <laughs> we go. I think I got your audio volume good. All right, let me just post a link. We are going over. We are oh. going over a thing. We are going over the meaning of corner moves and some must-know Joseki. So, okay. um in looking at your games, and I know I was like, just learn any Joseki you run into, but I'm realizing you might need a little more guidance than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give you a little more guidance. Awesome. So, uh, so this file has some must-know double-digit Q Joseki in it, as well as the meaning of different corner moves. And you can see the text written there is different corner moves have different meanings. Okay, let's dive in. A 4-4 four four has a flexible direction and can take either territory or influence. It's not committed to anything. It is a fence rider in all aspects. Mm -hmm. So um, you've seen this before. I mean, people can 3-3 three, three and then you only get influence. Mm -hmm. Or they approach and you get a little bit of territory. And it can be either direction, right? So it's a very flexible move. That's why often beginners use the 4-4s four because they're flexible. Mm. A 3-4 is territorial, and it has a direction. Um, so the direction that it encloses is always the 5-3 or the 5-4, um, so at A. And then the direction that group uh, wants to move towards is towards B. So the flow mm. of the stone wants to reach out to B. Okay. So it takes that knight's move on, you know, kind of that di diagonal surrounding the corner, and then the stones want to move, um, I guess, parallel mm -hmm. to that enclosure. A 3-3 three, three is also very flexible, but it's only territorial. So it's flexible just like the 4-4 four, four is. It can go in any direction, um, or either direction, I should say. And but it is a territorial move, and the three three is interesting because um, it's it will likely live no matter even if you tanuki an approach, even if you play away from an approach. So it's a very territorial move, but it's not that balanced. So it's easy it's easy for your opponent to take all the influence away from that. This next move is a blunder. So. This was supposed to be a 5-3. <laughs> There's a big X on it. Here's the 5-3 here. Okay. Um, <laughs> so a 5-3 is also a directional move. Um, and it shows the value for the side over the corner. Mm -hmm. So when a 5-3 is played, um, it is saying that I am more interested in this side here. Mm-hmm. I don't have to write side, do I? Well, no. I'm going to write it anyway. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then not the corner. We'll just do it. No mm, corner. Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, so it is it is directional, though. It's not a flexible move. Mm. Uh, and then the same with the 5-4, except instead of being territorial, uh, the 5-4 is influence-oriented. And again, it values the side over the corner. Uh, so yeah, that was our mistake. So now we get into some must-know Joseki. So here is one of the 3-4 Joseki. So white. Black approaches high. Again, in that corner, on that side, that's that the 3-4 tries to enclose. Mm -hmm. Then white attaches. Black Hane, white draws back, black connects, mm -hmm. white does a little jump along the side, and black makes a base. Mm -hmm. So I included uh, some variations to this. Instead of connecting solid, black can also tiger's mouth here, mm -hmm. but this leaves shape weaknesses, but it is a Joseki that's very common. White again does their little jumpy jump, and black goes just a little bit farther. 
Now, the reason why black is going farther is because the tiger's mouth brings the stone one space down. Yeah. Right. And that, so, that acts like a two, two wall. Okay. Exactly. So that acts like a two wall. So it's still a three space extension. Okay. So, um, so the whites, I'm sorry, whites move on the F17. So would that be considered an extension or making a base or that's just, okay, I'm going to take a step to the side. Like what, what would you call that then? Uh, it's, it's basically, I would call it making a base. Okay. Um, they're not going really far away just because of, of the triangle stone here and they don't care. Okay. They don't want to be fully surrounded. So if okay. white if white omits their little jumpy jump, let's see, where is that move? I draw back, connect. Let's say let's say white plays away here. I don't know. <laughs> it, <laughs> Perfect. If white move. Plays, I love it. If white plays away, then black can attach. Mm hmm And then they're crawling on the second line. Mm. And they're trapped, kind of. Mm -hmm. so that that is the reason they just make a little jump there to avoid that attach and complications around it okay uh we're a little farther than i wanted to be um i also included included a low approach somewhere where is it oh a little farther than that it's not those must be this one, okay. Here's a low approach. This one's probably the easiest low approach to remember. If white just diagonals, black makes a two space base. Mm -hmm. White kicks him to make him heavy and to take the corner. Next turns. Yep. Black stands up. White just takes a one space jump, and that's the end of the sequence. It's a very, mm. very simple sequence. But in general, I find the high approaches... So with the low approaches, there's like a million variations. With the high approaches, there's far fewer. Mm. So I recommend, as a DDK, to do the ones with fewer variations for now. Okay. And connecting solid is the simplest one. Oop, how did we not go straight? I want to go straight. There we go. All right. So that's that's a must know Joseki there, right there yeah, for the three four, for the four four I've included a few must know Joseki as well. So here's a very common one. Uh, mm -hmm. White approaches a knight's move. Black knight's moves away. White slides. Black blocks the corner, and white jumps. And uh, black can black can take some more territory on top if they want to. That's an mm -hmm. option, but not necessary. Okay, Another. so I, mm -hmm. I had a quick question. So say that you did play at the 4-4 four, four position, so Q16, right? Mm -hmm. And white comes in and uh, approaches your black corner. Yeah. Now, isn't that like, would that be considered an extension or an encampment of your corner, correct? Because they're extending their side. I know in this example, is this is a cross sectional it's not really extending uh but if they instead of going on r14 that they Oop. they approach the I went too far, uh sorry. no no that's fine uh instead of r14 they approach at the o17 route mm -hmm. right and and they already have their top left hand corner they approach your o17 round this is like the the fourth round fifth round being played would sure. that be an extension on White's part because they have that whole top left side and then they're extending out, right? Uh, it's a, it's a little like generally in Go we talk about extensions um, extending to the the middle, and okay. not as an approach to the side. Oh, um, okay. Because I, I I I was assuming that that was an extension, and so I, I was pretty much doing what you were telling me to do. So when your opponent extends, you. Uh, and trap them. Uh, you you oh, okay. reduce their territory. So that's that's why in some of my games, that's what you saw. It's like, oh, the opponent approached me on the side, and then I was like, okay, well, if you're going to approach me on the side, I'm not going to defend. I'm going to reduce your territory first. And ah, so, okay. And I think that's... Yeah, okay. So, all right. 
Yeah, either way. So, so yeah, this is kind of a must know. So opening moves include the Josaki pattern. Mm -hmm. You don't have to uh, ignore a Josaki pattern in order to play like a star point or something. OK. Um, so again, that's approach, slide, uh, back off, slide, block the corner, and jump back. Mm -hmm. And then black can play away or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, an additional one you've probably seen is the kick. So mm -hmm. white approaches, same move. Black kicks. Black kicks. White stands up. Yep. And then where does black go? Black defends. Uh, I think it was what O seventeen, or maybe they a little do, bit. They play a knight's move. Yep. And then you make a base. Yep. Yep. And that's the end of that. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Good. You know this one. Awesome. Yes. We went through that last week. So. I know. Well, I'm just making sure. I'm just making <laughs> yep, sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. So this one uh, is a little more complicated. White's gonna. Take the, three, the ground. Three. Yep. He extends. You extend. Yeah. He uh, hanes. You cap. connect one way or another. Yeah. Yep. And then jump. And you know, black can push one more, and white will extend, but it's mm -hmm. not necessary. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. All right, back, back, back. And what other ones did I have in here? Oh, that's all the ones for that. But there are also, of course, three threes. Mm -hmm. um, and the simplest one. Well, this is this is old, and people in chat are going to be like, "Why are you teaching him the old one that uses <laughs> But I still it, use that. Yeah. It, it still works. Yeah, it yeah. still works. No, why is it old? Is it because the AI is like developing new ways to get around that Joseki, or is it AI, just not as efficient? AI changed things. So oh, okay. AI showed us that Sente is more important. Mm. So for probably the easiest AI version, black takes a knight's move, mm -hmm. white pushes, this, Hane, and black continue key from here. Mm. Um, if, if black takes an extension, there's just this. You just connect, and it's fine. Sente is important. Why doesn't white opening. disconnect the three groups? So say that black went away and did an R10 move. So why doesn't white just move at O16? Like this cut here? Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, we're going to extend, right? And mm -hmm. then what's the follow-up? Well, the follow-up is I would extend the top. Uh, not the top, sorry. The, the one towards the closest to the middle to build a presence in the middle, right? Yeah. So you're going to extend this way? Mm hmm so then white turns or black then, turns yeah black turns and then um you connect at okay. p18 yep all yep. right and, and then, then what black honeys or extends out okay okay you can honey but this is a little safer and, okay. then, uh... and then yeah peep through and if, if white does this, it, it ain't no thing for black. Mm. So essentially, white ends up with kind of a weak group. I mean, black kind of uh. has a weak group, but white also, it's a fight, but it's okay. It's weaknesses. And okay. later on, there's there's some Aji in here for the corner. Ah. Uh. Okay. So Yeah, I, I would think that building a presence in, in the middle of the board would be a good mid-game or mid to late game strat so yeah the issue is this isn't much of a presence at this point mm -hmm. white's gonna have to run away and black's gonna mm -hmm. get something out of that got it so. okay yep cool cool uh-huh let's uh what else we got did we we covered all the four four i wanted to cover cool uh do 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 and you know most of them already okay so Oh, we're going to go back a ways to that 3-3 three, three blunder, or, or that 5-3 blunder. <laughs> Let's show you a simple 5-3 Joseki here. All right. You approach at the 3-4. Mm -hmm. uh, White does kind of a large knight's move. And the simplest, simplest double-digit Q Joseki for this is to extend this way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> White kind of backs off and connects. Mm -hmm. You jump, white jumps, you diagonal to connect, and white connects, and then you extend, and black extends along. Mm 
I shouldn't say you, I should say black. Mm -hmm. Yep, so that's probably the simplest there. Now, there's lots of variations with the 5-3, and I'm not going to get into them, but... <laughs> uh, key to remember is, is when white does this, just make a one-space extension, mm. and you should be okay. Um, and I picked a pretty pretty easy 5-4 as well. Again, you take the 3-4. They are going to jump that way. You're going to attach on a back off and slide. And that's mm. that's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> um, you don't see a lot of 5-3s and 5-4s in games anymore, but they are out there. So if you can just remember a couple of the simpler variations, you'll be set. Mm -hmm. And let's see. What is last? What is this? Okay. What is that? Oh, yeah, you can extend along there. Okay. And then here's a couple of easy um, Joseki for the 3-3. Three, three. So black is going to um, extend way in way or not, one way or another if the, four, if the approach is at the 4-4. Four, four. Mm -hmm. um, white always extends farther than black went. Mm -hmm. Black will slide, and this is where things begin to change. Um, probably the easiest is for white to turn. Black will make this kind of knight's move, and hmm. white, will t white will take a base. Alternately, white might jump two spaces, uh huh, and then black slides the other way, and white jumps another two spaces. Interesting. To take all the influence. So those are oh. those are the basic joseki. Um, I want to impress on you, like in the opening, it's it's good to finish your joseki. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you approach something, play out a joseki, and then move on to the next big opening point, because okay. joseki are opening moves. So okay. I feel like I I didn't I didn't clarify that enough. I don't think. Um, and then, uh. Each of the kinds of moves have meaning, and some of them have direction. Mm. So it's important to recognize that, like, a 3-4 stone has certain directions, one for enclosing and another for the way it radiates influence and the direction the stones want to move. Mm -hmm. um, and the same with the 5-3 and 5-4. And then for the 4-4 four, four and 3-3, three, three, they're flexible moves that um, the 3-3 three, three is just territory-oriented, and then the 4-4, four, four, um, I would call it more flexible, but it's more influence-oriented because you're mm. it's not going to be solid territory. Okay. Make sense? A lot better. A lot, <laughs> a lot better. Okay. <laughs> because this whole time, I'm I'm memorizing the Joseki, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I just don't know why I'm memorizing it. And oh, okay. whenever, whenever I'm playing, whenever I'm playing a, a real match, right? Yeah, like I see my opponent not following the Joe second and like playing elsewhere. So then I I get the inkling that I have to respond to that. I was like, oh no, they're attacking my other corner. Now I gotta go defend. So I just never stay. Like you you seen it in the games, and I think that's that's probably the biggest blunder that I'm doing uh, in the last couple of weeks or so is that I'm not continuing on in that corner and I'm just I'm I'm, I'm responding so to speak. I'm panicking. And, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad this helps. And so um, this gives you, uh, I would say, learn the four fours and the three, three four Joseki on this, on this diagram. And, okay. um, and you can probably, you already learned a couple of them. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, do that for the next week and use them. Okay. And you should, that should get you a, a little farther in your games. Okay. Um, and we can start reviewing the games that you sent me now. So Yay. Let's... Did I have a 3-0 losing streak this week? I think I did. I thought you won one. I think you won one. Did I? Oh, okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, let me see. <laughs> uh, yes, you did What? win one. Awesome. Yep. So let me start a review. We are black in this game. Started with a 4-4. Great. And a 3-4. Awesome. Okay, so... Like we talked about, those three fours have a direction. Um, mm -hmm. So their enclosure is going to be here. Or, um, mm -hmm. or yeah, approaching high, is, I, like I said, is easier. Mm. So I would have expected something like this. Doo -doo. 
Uh, boop, boop, boop. But we didn't do that. That's okay. Normally, mm -hmm. you see an approach from this side if white already has a stone here. Mm -hmm. So if it's a Chinese variation, that's when black is going to approach. Not so close, but from around here. Oh, and this, wow. stone, this stone is to help approach around this area mm. if white doesn't enclose immediately. Because playing inside the Chinese formation, like, like without a prep move, um, is pretty much suicide for black. So I see. Something to be aware of. So white just takes their enclosure. That's fine. That makes sense. We played a uh, high Chinese on top. That's fun. Okay. They took an extension. Uh, take their... I would I would do a low approach to take their enclosure away. Mm. So you pick the right direction. Uh, I would just get a little closer and on the third line is going to make okay. it easier to live here. So again, the, uh, since they have the extension, oh, I didn't, I didn't give you this, Joseki, but they might attach. Excellent. <laughs> so it goes right. Block. Okay. And uh, Make a well, they're gonna they're gonna protect their cut point. That's how to mm -hmm. how to finish it. But yeah, got it. Often white to new keys, but that is a common joseki when white has that star point stone is important okay anyway we approached high that's fine they tanuki we made a base okay that's cool yeah fourth line stones can be undercut third lines are for territory fourth are for influence so now if we reverse the move order a little bit, like if we if we really wanted this as territory, we should have played here, mm. because white white's not going to attach to you then, right? Mm. They might they might back off like this if they do anything. Mm. So playing high invited white to try and undercut us and make us play another move. Or better yet, start with black on N three. Yeah, you're right, Paragirl. Uh I didn't, I didn't want to criticize his moves too much, but yeah. Um, Go ahead, by all means. So <laughs> this is so for here's entertainment. The deal. <laughs> with this one space high enclosure, mm -hmm. um, approaching here is really good for black. I why? Because of the Aji here. Oh, uh oh. -huh. So if white does nothing. Um, then black can peep, and they can just take everything, right? And since, oh. especially with that black stone on the outside. Uh huh. And then, if white does something crazy like kick, we stand up. And if they again play away, you still have this beautiful Aji here. Um. Etc. Uh -huh. To take away their corner, so yeah. But uh. That's kind of next level strats. Like, since you wanted to go that direction anyway, um, you might as well do the one that threatens to take away whites everything in the corner. Uh, I, I was just thinking of make a base. I have a two extension, make a base. <laughs> so yep, that's for sure. what I was doing. And then so, I would st stake in the ground. And I know I, I mentioned this in, in the Discord, but uh, ooh, I went too far again. You're. If you're surrounding a side, you want your stones to move in waves between the third and fourth line. Mm. Um, so after after they did this and you're making a base, then you have a fourth mm -hmm. line stone, so then put a third line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good to know. You know, depending. Those fourth line stones can be undercut, so if you had just a third line stone, extending along on the third line is fine, too. Mm. Okay, so we played this. What happened here? Oh, they're surrounding your one stone. Okay. Mm -hmm. So fighting spirit. Yep, we're going to dive in the middle. Uh, yeah, okay. So if you want to keep your opponent separated... Um, the vital points are going to be kind of a triangle here, right in the center. Mm -hmm. So I would, 
I personally would approach here. Mm -hmm. And then honey like this. But it's worth noting that you can also play on the third line right in the middle. And yeah, I was thinking about that'll it. That'll be a fight. Yeah. I, I, I honestly thought if I played on in the middle at R11, then he would just immediately go to Q11 and then just trap me down. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're saying Q11. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Like he'll So attach right on top? Or yep. do you want the P11 for the cap? No, Q Q11. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if they Q11, yep. then we Hane, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Do they cross cut? Yeah, they cross cut. That's what I was thinking that they would do. Extend yep. out. We're, yep. we're okay. We're okay. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Uh, maybe they'll do a little something like this. We can come out. They can't really oh. run a... It'll, it'll be a fight. Okay. I read it wrong. <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's worth considering. But more likely than the attachment, though, um, if they're going to cap you, they're going to cap one space. Mm -hmm. And then you have to come out one way or another. And it's less of a fight. But mm. that's... Normally, your opponent wouldn't attach right on top of you. Got it. Okay, so we played here. They did that. This is kind of how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is okay. Uh, so what do we do after that? Oh. I saw the table shape or the trapezoidal shape with my black stone in the center, so I was just like, oh, I'm just going to give up that little black stone right there. Yeah, this is this is good for black. I, w I would take the stone, though, mm. by targeting this way. Because once, mm. once you follow, they have nowhere to go, right? Mm -hmm. They're just dead. But approaching here is, and undercutting them is good, too. It's fine. Okay, what do we do here? We kicked. Perfect. Uh, might be a bad move. Yeah. I, I don't think it's a bad move. Okay, oh. you have Fighting Spirit. It's great. Um, I, I would probably block here first, though. Because mm. they're struggling for space. And they might die. But I don't think the clamp is bad. Mm. How do we follow up, though? Oh, okay. Mm, still not bad. Did we follow? Yes, we did. Great. So you killed two stones, fantastic. And then what did we do? Okay, this is that where it gets move. a little yeah. bit wonky. Probably just turn here. You've got enough now. Mm. From this exchange, you have this whole corner and the side. B6 is oh, yeah. a bit painful. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think, uh, I think you have enough from this exchange. If you just turn, then you're looking at surrounding more of, of this top side here. Mm -hmm. But I love the fighting spirit. I am not going to criticize you for... Ooh. Yeah, that's the wrong direction. Me or him? You. Yeah. Uh, atari that way? Yeah. Uh, so if you need to Atari, just Atari this way and connect your stones together. Mm. And then play elsewhere. Maybe take a vital point, or take some more of this uh, delicious corner here, or, you know, turn. Yep, any of that. But this forces your opponent to disconnect you, and mm -hmm. that's, that's a bad thing. Yep. Yeah, this is, this is very bad for black. Okay, so <laughs> at this point, we should connect under. Hmm. Okay, they kicked you. Yeah, they saw it. Um Yeah, that's just that's just fighting experience. That happens. Once you fight more, you'll get you'll get the hang out of uh, of it. Okay, great job killing his stones there. Wonderful. Uh this is fine.
Okay, so we connected and they played there. So mm -hmm. I, I would probably play here. Hmm. Because once they come out, then you have two stones for free and you probably uh, have the whole corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, it's hard to see. In fact, you can still do it after they Atari your stone. Yep, yep, yep. You just didn't see the 2CG. It's all good. I didn't. Mm -hmm. And then he saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, does this work for us? Ooh, looks like it worked. Uh, did it work? Mm. Mm. What did we do now? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm trying to trap those uh, stones on the bottom right there. Yep, I, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. uh, what did we do after that? Oh, that, no. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. So at this point, just turn, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. They got two liberties, right? So, mm -hmm. and we have three, three mm -hmm. or four. So yeah, no need to throw in that. That's a really fancy move, but it's uh, that <laughs> not working, not working in this case. Yeah, I ended. <clears throat> what did we play after that? That one. That works. Okay. Oh, we got them anyway. Okay, cool. Never mind. You played it just fine. It, it's all fine. <laughs> But not as efficient. Yeah, not quite as nice as it could have been. Mm -hmm. Okay, we died here. Did we have to die here? Uh, probably. Yep. I'll start this way. Hmm. And then go for go for this. If they take this, then we connect under. If they block, then we can connect, and we're probably alive at this point. Or we have a better chance, at least. Again, that's again, it's just fighting experience. So I'm not going to go mm -hmm. too much over the fights, since you are focusing mostly on opening. And then, yeah, this is a black collapse at this point. Uh, you could play a move in here to live. Did we play a move to live? Ooh, okay. Nope. Nope, we didn't. Okay. So yeah, I think, you know, give up the two stones, but but live this group. It's it's pretty important. Hmm. Yeah, still live with B eleven, exactly. So, yeah, I think that's that's where that game went. I think early on, we didn't finish some Joseki, and then we picked... We didn't keep our stones connected in the upper left here. Connecting connecting our stones together would have helped us out a lot here. Mm -hmm. And then you got, you got a nice kill on the bottom here. That's pretty good. And depending on the semi, -I, I like the fighting spirit. You were looking at killing these. Might mm -hmm. still happen. That's not too bad. And then, yeah. Then it was all about kind of spacing on the bottom. So let's move on to the next game. Ah, Charlie. Yes. Yes, you won this one. Yes, I did. Very so... surprisingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're black. We took a 4-4 and a 3-4. That's great. We approached their 4-4. That's perfect. Okay, uh, right, Joseki error here. The move yeah. for this Joseki is to attach. <sighs> White Ataris. And then White can either Tanuki or drop down. Mm. There's, a, there's a few variations if, if White wants to force you into the corner, but this is the easiest one to remember. This isn't a huge error, though. I would say. Approaching high, okay. And we talked about this extensively. Like, um, the low approach would probably do you better, for one thing. But if we're going to approach high, then let's let's play out the Joseki, right? Let's, um, let's Hane here. 
and we can either Tiger's Mouth or we can connect. And then, you know, White might do this, one, two, three, and we might back off like this, something like that. It's playable. So you mentioned, you're like, I'm focusing on hunting when they attach and making a base. And mm -hmm. so they attached and you didn't hunt a, and then afterwards you didn't make a base. And I was like, mm -hmm. what are you talking about? I thought you said you were focusing on this. I hope I wasn't. I, I, I was, I was, <laughs> I was. <laughs> Maybe I lied. I, I have to know. give you a hard time. It's all right. Do it. I need it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we did a of hunting. Yes. We dropped down. Okay, that's all fine. And then now I made a base. I think I made a base after You oh, didn't. No, no. I didn't. I, 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 I Not at all. Closed. Nope. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> uh, the drop down might be better as a tiger's mouth, indeed. Yep. Um, yep. And then. And then I don't know what this move is. This is a strange move. Oh, I so. was just trying to contain him. That's it. Yeah, I mean, they're they're already settled. So contain mm. something else. Okay. Um, <laughs> we want we want to take the the big opening moves on the completely empty parts of the board. That's what I'm discovering as I'm playing this past week. I keep the big ones very big. See, you were you were trying to uh, limit this little space mm -hmm. when there are these huge spaces over here. Mm. So don't worry about your opponent's six six points when you can make twenty. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. So we played that move. Really better off to. Uh... Oop. Is it working? There we go. Better off to just play here. So, or somewhere in there. Make your base. Yep, and then you attached to... I don't... I'm not sure. This attach is strange, too. Well, it's double Q magic. That's all I'm I know, saying. I know. <laughs> and you won this game, so, I mean, it clearly worked. <laughs> yeah, and we talked about this, too. Take your enclosure... And just like mm -hmm. we talked about in our lesson today, again, there's a direction that a 3-4 wants to enclose and a direction that the 3-4 stones want to radiate influence towards or extend towards. Mm -hmm. So now with this enclosure, your stones want to move this direction here mm -hmm. afterwards. So 3-4s are directional. It's very important. Uh... Yep, they haunted. I would I would follow this up. Let's let's keep our stones connected mm -hmm. and put more pressure on our opponent, probably. And again, this is we play the surrounding game, not the attaching game. Um there's no need to attach to your opponent's strong stones. Okay, playing a little bit of endgame. That's fun. Kick him. Make him heavy. Okay, great. This is all fine. Okay. Uh, this is okay. I would say make your base and keep mm. the pressure. So you want to make your base for these stones while keeping pressure on these. Mm -hmm. But I think you chose the right direction. Just maybe the move could have been optimized a little bit. Hmm. This is okay. No need to play there. Mm. Attaching is not attacking. That's great, JF Baritone. That's right. Attaching is not attacking. Thank you, JF. That's a that's that's a good memetic device. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, that was not a not a necessary move. So probably if I really wanted to attack, if I really wanted to make sure these were dead, I, w I would play a shape move here. Mm. White just doesn't have space to make two eyes in Sente. 
and this this is just nicer style. It makes that nice tiger's mouth shape, right? That's one of our shapes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Playing a first line move for no reason is is right out, and it's bad. Mm. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, you connected stones that were already connected. If you're worried about a connection, just connect these. Mm. I mean, we still eventually got to connect. White played very strangely. Mm -hmm. So I would probably, just to ensure this isn't a co, I'd play this now. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. But we ended up winning the co, so it was fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would probably play a nicer shape like this instead of, of that move. But yeah. it worked out okay. And this was well seen. Your opponent uh, didn't even have a chance there. So nice, nice job finding the Tsuji. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's good. You totally found you found a Tsuji. You killed him. It's great. You're about to kill the right side too. That's fantastic. Mm hmm. Very good. Uh, yeah, I guess that's that game. We can move on to the next one. And the last one. Uh-huh. Let me, let me know, too, like, it, I know it's really tough to hear a strong player just, like, uh, dog all your moves and be like, you should have done this and you should have done this. So let me let me know if it's ever too much information or if I'm focusing too much on mistakes. Because um, I don't want you to feel bad about your games. Um, like, my yeah. job as a teacher is to point out mistakes when you make well, them. And I don't... <laughs> I don't think less of you. I don't think you're stupid for making mistakes. Everybody starts somewhere. So um, I just want you to know, like, be encouraged. You're making common mistakes that everybody mm -hmm. makes. And everybody has to learn these particular concepts in order to get stronger at Go. So don't feel like, oh, Daniel is only, Daniel's just focusing on all the negative stuff. And uh, I'm feeling really down about my game. You're doing great. For a new player, you're playing really well. <laughs> Um, well, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, we're black in this game. 14Q versus a 9Q, so an even game. You're definitely going to lose. Well, Paragraph it's the says... same, it's the oh, same yeah. guy as I played last time, too. Yeah, he improved. Oh, okay. He improved by wow. two Qs over one week. Yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. I know. He's crazy. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're black. We played a 4-4. Four, four. They played a 4-4. Four, four. We played a 3-4. Great. He's mirroring you. That's fine. I actually didn't even notice that. <laughs> so, yeah, let's finish our Joseki. Hmm. Uh, and then if we're going to approach that 3-4, let's approach the, the directional move. Okay. So, we... You know, we might, we might do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, Daniel, learn your Joseki here. There we go. <laughs> Leaving out moves. Okay. Yeah. So if if you wanted that third line stone, uh, just 
take it right away. Mm. And we talked about this in the other game too, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. Uh, yeah. So this is fine. Kicking is fine. But the follow-up move is here. Oh, what did I do? Uh, you pincered. Oh. So you're trying to keep pressure on white, uh, but mm -hmm. white should be fine in that set scenario. And white just showed you the, like, Undercut. if you really want to pincer, then pincer the base. Mm -hmm. They would probably end up something like this, or they might uh, turn now and then extend. Something like this mm -hmm. would be the follow-up, but yeah. Pincering is okay, yes. But as Paragirl mentioned, Q7 or uh, R8 mm. are a little more common. So the Q7 move is going to be something like this, right? Mm -hmm. So just, it's a direction you can play, uh, but could have been optimized just a little bit. Hmm. No big. Okay, now normally I tell you never make an empty triangle, but this is one of those exceptions where you want to keep your opponent separated. Hmm. So keep them separated. In general, keeping your opponent separated is good for you. Mm -hmm. Not always, but in general. Um, <laughs> and then... So what this does essentially is it puts pressure on the square group as well as the uh, triangle group here. And white has to make a decision about which group to defend. Mm. <clears throat> but this way, now your corner's under attack. And they're fully connected. Yep. Mm. Good Tanuki from white here. I I might respond to their approach. I probably would respond to that. Mm. And that, because these stones are all by themselves, right? Mm hmm So, I mean, if white follows up one way or another, then connecting these feels, feels really good. Oh, Paragrill doesn't like the Tanuki from white. I think the Tanuki is okay. I think Paragor meant me when I tanukied out. <laughs> oh, that could be. That could be. Yeah. Go for Say... a super big. Oh, yeah. That cut is large. Yeah, it connects your group. Huh. Yep. And then um, oh, your white, triangle okay. stone is actually all by itself and kind of in danger. So, mm -hmm. yeah. White connecting with a tiger's mouth or just connecting solid is really big there. Mm -hmm. Or black cutting there is quite large too. So you're right. Paragrill is correct on that one. Okay, so we Atariid and Atariid. And then we connected. Mm -hmm. Nope. <laughs> okay, you gotta you gotta connect. I was trying to grab his two stones. I know, but you mm -hmm. can't. Like, even even after the drop down, like, let's say he doesn't Atari, he can just take the one stone, right? Mm hmm. I mean, I guess if you connect, then his corner's in danger, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep your opponent disconnected and yourself connected if you can. Okay, we built a nice wall. Oh, you got the cut. Nice. All right. And then what do we do? Okay. I like that idea. Uh, a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. Would be more optimal. I think. Uh, this doesn't work. So let's find another way. Yeah, I don't 
I don't think you can trap these, but what this does is it keeps it keeps the square stone from connecting under. Mm -hmm. But let's see what happened. Maybe consider at some point cutting S10, S8 since there are two cuts. Yep, uh, yep, I, yep. Yeah. I could, but I, I, the reason why I didn't cut at S10 or S8 was because it was on the second line. And usually when I play on the second line, I just die. I, I don't know how to defend on the second line. Right. So Steven's, Steven's mm -hmm. talking about a Tsuji here, where if, mm -hmm. if you cut and white tries to tick, then you can have sorry this side, mm -hmm. and then kill kill the large group. Mm. So yeah, if they go down, they're just dead, right? Oh, I did not see that. Yeah, and then if they try to go this way, you can just kill it that way. Hmm. In a ladder. So, you know, they're they're not gonna play that way, right? They're going to connect this way instead. In which case, you have the ladder. You can either just take the stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just take the stone. And then they have to live on this side. In Gote, probably, one way or another. And then you get Sente to make your base or whatever. Oh. Huh. I did not see that. Yep. Okay, so it's a, it. it's a pretty common <laughs> position. So... So the position really is um, there's a there's a Hane on the second mm -hmm. line and another Hane up beside it. Mm. So that, that leads to lots of interesting variations. Hmm. Yep, yep. Okay. We're trying to kill this. It's a fun idea. Unfortunately, no, we don't no, have no, enough no. liberties. Yeah. Uh, this was a. Uh, yeah. Yep. You gotta connect here if you want to do anything, and then they're just gonna take your four stones, right? Yep. Yep. Which is okay, because then we get to connect in Sente, and then we get to play elsewhere. Yeah, that whole bottom corner, I lo I just lost it. So. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 He did. <laughs> So it goes. Uh, right. So when you're when you're deeply surrounded on all sides, like this. Hey, it's a horse head. And you want and you want to actually escape. You don't want to sacrifice the stone. Jump out. Mm. Just just keep on jumping until you make it to a home. Okay. Mm. Don't. Like, if there's no room for a base, you gotta jump. You gotta jump. Digging digging in is, is not going to help you. And there's a case to be said that white should have played here instead. Mm. But... Boop, boop. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I might, I know in general you don't want to help your opponent connect, but because because of this area and that we have a stone here, it's not mm -hmm. too bad to block this way. But this is okay. Doo -doo -doo. And then it's just fighting experience. Mm -hmm. Which but, I did yeah. not have. <laughs> hey, it takes time. Oh. It takes a lot of time to gain. You know, I'm having tons of fun with it, but uh, this this huge fight right here in in, in the right side uh, was was painful, super painful. Yeah, yeah. I think so. It it would just be a different game if early on we had um, if early on we had taken our base here. It would just be a very different game. Yeah. If you had just a little bit of extra support, or if you had followed up their approach move here, mm -hmm. it would just be a very different game. But yeah, 
all in all, I mean, you're playing someone who's five stone stronger than you, right? And mm-hmm. you played an even game. So. That's an extension, not a base. <laughs> no. No, we have a, how many, how many stone wall? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have a seven stone wall. <laughs> okay. So we can have a five space base. <laughs> So that's one, two, three, four, five. We can go this far (laughs) and make a base. I love it. (laughs) Um, Yeah. (laughs) But all in all, like you're playing someone five swims stronger than you, and you're playing an even game. Like they're they're gonna they're gonna beat you up a little bit, and that's okay. Um, do you have any questions about some of the must-know Joseki, the direction that the stones want to go? Um, is there anything that you keep hitting on in your games that, um, you'd like to have some pointers for, or? Yeah, uh, there was one thing that I, I, and I remember last week you told me empty triangles is bad, just bad, Mm -hmm. bad, bad, but, um, like you said, there's an exception today that you would have done which is for disconnection group and i also saw uh one of your streams either yesterday or the day before where you also created an empty empty triangle but it it was in collaboration with the bamboo shoot so one of the bamboo shoots had an empty triangle shape so when is it like i always thought it was like empty triangle not a good shape don't ever try to do it but there are exceptions. So how yeah. wide or how varied are these exceptions? Or is it just like one or two cases where so, an empty triangle is okay? Part of it has to do with reading. So, mm-hmm. and part of it is if I had made good shapes to begin with, I might not have had to make that empty triangle to connect my groups. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, I think I know what you're talking about. There were several bamboo connections and I had to make a turn mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. to connect it all together. So in a case where it's it's the only move to either connect your groups together or um, to, to kill your opponent, then an empty triangle is just fine. The okay. reason that an empty triangle is bad is because it's three stones with only one, two, three, four, five, seven liberties. Mm. So even if you had three stones in a row, you would have eight liberties, right? Mm-hmm. So three stones with seven liberties, that's why it's bad. But there mm-hmm. are cases where um, you're surrounded in such a way that turning and making an empty triangle is the only way out safely. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's fine there. If you're disconnecting your opponent, it's fine to make an empty triangle to cut them. Um, mm-hmm. If it's the only way you can connect your stones, it's just fine to make an empty triangle. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or if... if like over here, I mean, this is technically an empty triangle, right? Yeah. But, you know, you're surrounding the corner. It's it's fine to, to surround uh, territory with your empty triangle, too. Or to, okay. to close off endgame. That's okay. Just if you're in a situation where, you know, it's the middle of the board and you have the choice between an empty triangle or a jump, then do the jump. I see. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. There's so a lot if, of info t- this week, so okay. Basically, if you have a better option, take the better option. But mm-hmm. if empty triangle is the only option, you you gotta make the empty. Yep. 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 Uh, let's see. Okay. So, homework for this week, I'm not going to tell you to just learn one Joseki. I want you to learn all the 4-4 four, four, and 3-4 from the diagram today. So okay. I think that's five Joseki. Cool. The 3-4 high. You don't need to learn the low one yet, but definitely the 4-4s four, since you're since you're opening with lots of 4-4s. Four, mm. um, and then the simpler 3-4s. Learn all those. Mm-hmm. And um, then you can forego your Tsumego for the week, you know, okay. to study Joseki instead. Um, and okay. then again, again, three games. Three like, games, got it. 
they're simple just like they should be easy to learn but um i think it's i think it's important to mm -hmm. learn those must know just like for double digit cues okay. get them under your belt sound good yes how's what, how's the what, how's the up? time going for you like do you have enough time to play the games and do a little bit of study or um it, it's tight it's tight that's why yeah. i'm i'm able to get around three four games a week with mm -hmm. the sumego problems with the studying of the joseki uh it is it is tight but uh I'm, I'm making it work at least the best i can I, I i didn't realize how long one game of playing took and depending on the opponent it could be super super fast or super super long so oh yeah that's true yeah uh, I think on average, I think the time per games that I've been spending on is roughly around 50 minutes or so. so okay. Yep. So my reading uh, ability towards the end of the game gets really bad. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. If it's, you know, you could make a faster game, like if you create the time settings a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, so instead of 20 minutes, do 10 minutes main time. Mm. Um, that might help. But if you're finding you're using all your time reading on a 20 minute game, then don't make them shorter. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, they just take a while. They take a while. So mm -hmm. if for some reason you can't squeeze in all three games and you just get two in a week, that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, three games is usually usually what we go for for a lesson. So Okay. No, I, I'm going to get three games in. So. I just want to make yeah. sure you're not you're not like wrecking yourself. Just oh, I gotta get my games in <laughs> no, two no, in the no, morning no, no. on a on a Wednesday night. Um... No, no, I, I, I purposely <laughs> I purposely um, do spread out my games because I usually spend time to reflect on the games, and so uh, I want to take that time just to reflect and see if I can improve my games myself for mm -hmm. the next one and and see how much better I can improve. So cool. yeah, yeah. But I do have one last question before I forget, because I know this whole day is all about Joseki. And uh, the question that I have as a brand new DDK beginner type type of guy, um, the Josekis are, 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 I don't know how to word this, but is it, is it like, like for a lot of DDKs, when they memorize the Joseki and they understand the Joseki, uh, is it some somehow? Uh, this is going to be sounding very weird. Like a magical <laughs> improvement of their game, just drastically improving their game uh, because they understand the Joseki. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Memorizing <laughs> equals understanding. <laughs> Men memorizing does not equal understanding. Okay. But learning learning basic Joseki corner patterns. Mm hmm um will improve your game now, now why okay so i i think i remember the actual question so why does it improve a person's ddk's game is, is it because we're able to hold the corner and that's what's improving our game uh with the territory or is it or is there other skills that is dr like going along with it that uh, we as ddk don't see just yet right so one thing you're learning is you're learning um shapes okay um to use in other parts of the board um and then you're also learning some patterns mm -hmm. but thirdly it gives you another one of those stronger footholds to extend mm -hmm. along the middle and the side so if if your corner is set and settled mm -hmm. um it's it's a lot easier for you to get into the fighting and not lose so much mm -hmm. um but yeah the the shapes that the joseki use and the patterns along with some of the concepts of how to punish like bad play for the Joseki mm -hmm. and searching for an even result. Those are all key concepts for a double digit Q. Okay. Okay. Did, awesome. Did I answer your question? I hope I did. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you did. I'm, I'm just, you know, <laughs> as a brand new player, I'm trying to understand why the lessons are the way they are. Like, why are we studying this? What's the whole point? and the purpose of it and so just being able to have that take a step back and just understand oh okay this is why we're doing this it really does help me yeah. at least that's how i learn so so a go game especially <clears throat> since a go game is cumulative and you can't mm -hmm. take back moves you played 20 moves ago mm -hmm. um then we're starting at the start 
for opening theory, basic shapes, building your bases, and Joseki, because you can't take those moves back, and they affect everything later on in the game. Mm. So that's that's why we kind of that's why I like to teach starting at the start, um, mm. because okay. if you have a strong foundation, the rest the rest of your game goes easier. Okay, interesting. Yep. And I, I have one more question. I know I'm holding up. Yeah. Just no, one quick fine. question, and, and I hope chat can can help answer this too. So, I know the difference between double digit Q, single digit Q, and then so what what is the difference between a dawn level in terms of Joseki, in terms of understanding the go, the dawn level amateur versus dawn level professional? Because I would think that if you're already dawn level amateur, you have a really strong understanding of the game. So why would professional like how much further away is the gap from um from so probably two? probably is it just fighting a, experience or mm, it's it's a lot of things so it's okay. reading it's um understanding how uh different parts of the board interact with each other I and see. then understanding how those subtle decisions affect the rest of the board and mm. then it's actually um a complete mastery for the pro of not only opening but also the middle game fighting and end game so their pros are thinking about end game way earlier than amateurs are but uh, in general you could say like a seven dawn amateur egf or seven dawn amateur uh or maybe an eight dawn amateur aga is around a one dawn pro wow in strength wow so one pro, I mean, these are people that start in their childhood. They go to school for Go. They play, you know, thousands of games a month in their Go school as children. Mm -hmm. And they're deeply embedded with the the knowledge of the game. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just, it's a whole different level. It's a whole different wow. level. There's got to be a quick shortcut to that. <laughs> no, no, there's not. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> so it's it's kind of like, and I, I often compare Go to music just because I started out as a musician, but since I played viola since I was a kid, mm -hmm. then, you know, in my adult life, I've had the opportunity to play with people who started learning as an adult. Mm -hmm. And I've found that the stuff that I, I don't even think about that's just ingrained in my muscles... Mm -hmm. and ingrained like in my subconscious of on how to perform how to make tone how to shape my fingers all that stuff they have to think about mm -hmm. and so it's very similar with go um like for for a professional go player who was learning since they were a kid like it's so ingrained so mm. it's just a whole different level no oh. Sounds exciting. <laughs> I hope I hope that answered your question. That did. That did. I'm not going to take any more of your time. Thank you so much for the lesson. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks. Thanks so much. Uh, awesome. We'll talk to you soon. Awesome. See ya. Bye. And uh, let's see. For those who are interested, if you're a double digit Q and you are interested in taking lessons with me, my lessons are $10 for a one hour lesson. Um, and you can sign up at that link at simplybook.me. Um, yeah. And this is exactly what we do. I review your games over the week. I come up with a specific lesson just for you. And I take students between 20Q and 10Q. And then I pass you off to another teacher because uh, that's what I'm comfortable teaching. And we can we can get you a little farther along uh, that way. And I've had about four students. And they've all been reasonably satisfied with the lessons. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sign up if you'd like to. Also, check out Indie Chin's channel, twitch.tv slash IndieSN. Uh, you can follow him. He's a cool guy. Uh, we stream Minecraft together, and he does uh, a little bit of variety gaming as well as Go. And he's making Go commentary on YouTube, which is very fun. It's very fun to listen to. So check that out. 